I think I've always been a worrier. I think I've always been quite anxious. My mum passed away 25 years ago and I think that potentially started the worrying, imagining that things will always go wrong. I took myself to hospital a few times, thinking that I was, I was going to die. I felt like I was having a heart attack. I couldn't breathe properly. Why do I feel like I'm going to fall over because I'm dizzy? Why is this? I've done nothing wrong. It's always worse in the morning for me. And then, God, not another bloody day. Not another day like that. And you're struggling. You're struggling to actually even do the basic tasks that you expect to do. Uh, just struggling with day-to-day -day tasks and, I don't know, just getting in this slump that you have no idea how you got there in the first place or how you're going to get out. I felt like I was just trapped and I didn't know what to do next. I'm Michelle, um, I'm the Health and Safety Officer for Timpson. Live on my own, live in Staley Bridge, um, like running, like socialising, a um, bit of a sarcastic sense of humour. Been here nearly 25 years, know everything inside out. Um, two children, a wife, happily married for 10 years. I've worked at Timpson's for just short 15 years. I love life. I um, have a lot of fun. I love exercise and I love people. I've worked for Timpson's for eight years. I like going out socially, drinking with friends, a uh, massive football fan like Man United, although some people within Timpsons won't like that. Yeah, I guess someone that just enjoys patchworking, spending time with family and <laughs> a lot of films as well. I first talk about the business, really. I say that uh, I've got a family business and uh, I'm quite clear. Just to make everyone clear, I don't run it anymore, but I'm still involved. I haven't disappeared. I was finding that my weekends were basically locking myself in the house and not wanting to go out um, because I didn't necessarily think I was worthy to go out and people wouldn't like me. But then also I was worried about how I would be when I went out. Because I think particularly when I'm anxious, I can have a tendency to overdrink. So it was easier to just stay in and lie in bed or lie on the settee and do nothing all day. And to just throw a sickie and not come in because I couldn't cope with the thought of everything. In 2014, I suffered with quite, quite a bad illness. Um, and I don't, it's called Crohn's disease. Um, and that can come and go. There's no structure to it. There's no rhythm with it. It's just one minute you're fine, the next minute you're not. Um, and through that being so it's a miss, I had this thing in the back of my head thinking something's going to go wrong. So then it started building up and building up and building up to the point where I didn't want to go out. I said, Try to my family on three occasions because I didn't know whether we were going to make it through the surgeries. And in the back of my mind, everything that I was doing, I was doing thinking that I wasn't going to be here. So I was doing everything to make sure that my wife was set up for life, that my family were going to still be okay, that my memory was going to be well fond of, thinking that I'm not going to be here. And that was our thought every single day. Well, the first, the first time it ever I have ever had a an attack as such was I was out in the night time in the club with my friends um, and it just felt weird and, and like I was claustrophobic as such um, and I just had to get out and then again when I was back at work on the Monday I had a same sort of a feeling um, and that went on for some time daily. Back in 2011, uh, right out of the blue, I caught a brain virus. Uh, it's a virus called encephalitis, which is quite rare. Um, but 
can be quite deadly and very, very serious. And that changed me in a way that I never thought somebody's life could change. I woke up in hospital to find that I was quite a different person, which was really, really, really odd. But within a couple of weeks, I suddenly realised when I couldn't really spell or write emails or remember anybody's names, that it was far more serious than I ever, ever, ever could have imagined, which was hard to deal with, really, really hard to deal with. I think it's mostly when you literally can't stop crying at work or you're driving somewhere and just out of nowhere, like you just burst out or you have a, have a panic attack and just the thought of going anywhere just makes me feel physically sick. And I just kind of felt trapped. Like I was at a point where I couldn't physically do anything. Like I couldn't go to work. I felt like I just, I couldn't leave the house. I couldn't speak to anyone. It was just, it was just a kind of a breaking point where I was like, I don't want, I don't want my life to be like this, so. It was about that time when I started to run the business for the, really for the first time in the 1970s, that I suddenly hit the wall and all these strange things happened and I felt I almost couldn't get to work. I mean, it's really odd that suddenly you've, you've completely lost. You want to keep doing it, but you just, you just can't face it. You can't, uh, and I thought that there was something terribly going, something going really wrong uh, because I was so nervous and I was so resistant. I got butterflies in my stomach or I felt really sort of miserable and it wasn't me anymore. And I guessed everyone around me would, would notice that. I don't know whether they did. In the end, Alex did, thank God. And uh, she said, well, you, whether you like it or not, you're going to go to the doctor. I kept putting it off, um, telling my wife, yeah, I'm going to go, I'm going to go. But then I've got work commitments and stuff like that. Um, and then I finally did the jump uh, and went. It was, it was quite difficult. Talking to the doctor was the easy bit because he just said, well, this is what's wrong with you. We need to, to put you in contact with... Um, these people as such, the counsellors as such. So a good friend of mine at work talked me into going to see a counsellor, which I did, and worked with her on and off for probably four years in total. Absolutely fabulous. But as, alongside that, I also went back to the GP who said it, it, I was in the worst state of anxiety he'd seen in the last three years. To be honest, at first, I was scared to go because in my head I thought that, well, I know what's making me sad. No one knows what I'm thinking or how I'm feeling. That like No one would be able to understand. So I didn't really want to go. And the first one, I was terrified. I got my mum to drive me because I was I just did not want to go. But literally as soon as I stepped out, I just felt like a weight had been lifted off my shoulders. I wasn't I wasn't stupid in how I was feeling. I wasn't I'm not an alien for feeling this way and I like, just felt like no one would, was understanding me or I didn't even know why I was feeling that way. So just to have that reassurance and for someone to sit and listen to you and just be like, it's okay that you are feeling this way. That was, to be honest, that was just so good to hear. And I just felt so relieved, just when I got out. I think if you don't talk, the danger is you're gonna spiral and you're gonna get worse and these feelings are gonna get out of control talk doesn't matter who to initially you know doesn't have to be the doctor doesn't have to be a voluntary service that's at the end of the phone it doesn't have to be family and friends talk to somebody you know and just just say I've got one friend who I trust really 
I, I trust him a lot and he sends me a message at least once a week without fail just because I spoke to him once and I didn't go too much into detail I just told him I was struggling there was a few little bits and bobs in my life that didn't go all the way in every single week one message and that is as good as everything I'm going to get the first thing, first things to do are actually recognise you've got a problem um, uh, and talk to someone about it. And probably fairly soon go and talk to a doctor about it and find about... Find, and that way you discover that you're certainly not the only person like that. And also, if you can talk to someone, the right person close to you, probably someone in your family, and hopefully, in our business, member of the area team, member of whoever is, is, is running the team you're part of or is uh, another member of that team, if you can talk to them, that is the right first route to go. Without talking about it, if you hold it all into yourself and think, I'm going to get better by myself, you're making things miles more difficult. Don't be too proud. Seek help from somebody you trust because there will be somebody out there. It could be somebody in your family, somebody at work. Don't be afraid. Don't be as stupid as I've been because in the long run, it doesn't, doesn't help at all. You can still have a great job. You can still have a brilliant career in a brilliant company like Timson's. You can still be yourself, but just get some help because nobody, nobody needs to suffer.